In the last Pulse FFI episode, I completed methods to create, run, and free a Pulse Audio main loop. Today, I want to tie all of these methods together with a composed method. Once again, this is a live style episode, so please bear with me when I pause and stutter. Alright, so now I have the sort of building block methods that I need for my next step. Remember, in my uh, high-level call here that I sketched out, I said that I would just call a main loop dot run this class level method that doesn't that doesn't uh, exist yet. So I've got all the building blocks I need to to build this run method now. And this this run method is pretty much going to be just like a, a composed method. It's it needs to instantiate a, a main loop. It needs to uh, it needs to do a callback to it needs to yield to its block. Uh, then it's going to run the, that main loop, and then finally it needs to free it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and write a test for that. Kind of an unwieldy test name, but we'll deal. Now, um, I thought for a little while about how I wanted to test this, and uh, you know, I thought one way I could do it would be to verify that PA main loop new is called, and then PA main loop run, and then PA, PA main loop free. Uh, that seemed a little redundant because of, I'm already testing those in the individual methods that call them. And, you know, when I think about it, I'm testing a class method, and a class method is, well, it's, it's a different object. I mean, the class is a different object than the instances. So um, I decided I'd kind of test it in the same isolated way I've been testing these instance methods, and I would uh, just basically make the instance a, uh, a test double and assert that the appropriate methods are called on the instance. So I'm going to actually stub a method on main loop. I'm going to stub the new method. I'm going to stub it to return a test double. And I'm going to go ahead and assign a local variable for that as well. Now I need to verify that the block that is passed to this run method is actually yielded to. And um, the best way I know to do that when I'm testing with mocks and stubs is to create a, um, a probe uh, test double and then make an assertion that the probe will receive just some random method. Um, it's not that important uh, what the method is called. So here let me show you what I'm going to do here, how that's going to get called. I'm going to say main loop dot run do probe Dot ping. So by introducing this probe, I've I've given myself a way to verify that this this loop is actually run because it's this ping method isn't going to be called unless block is yielded to. Let's run that. All right, undefined method run. So we need a class level run method. Expected ping didn't get it. Let's put that yield in there. And we're passing again. All right, uh, what else do we need to assert in here? So we don't just need to assert that we run the block. We also need to assert that the loop is run and then shut down correctly. So I'm gonna. We have already have that loop. Um, that loop double. I'm gonna say loop. Dot. Should receive. Run. And loop dot should. Receive. Free. Okay, so this this verifies that they're actually they're called, but what this doesn't assert is any order uh, that they're called in, and it really would not be good if we called free and then run. That would that would be bad. So let's assert some order about uh, the way these are called, and the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to tack on the dot ordered modifier on the end of these expectations. Run it get a failure. And I'm going to go ahead and fix all these at once. Let's say loop equals main, uh, new. And I'm going to um, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I, I know that I'm going to want to pass the initializer options through here. I haven't written a test that asserts this yet, uh, but I'm just going to cheat and go ahead and put those in. All right, so there's our loop. Then we yield. Then we tell it to run. And then we tell it to free itself. And we're passing. 
My high level run method is almost complete. It creates a main loop, yields, runs the loop, and then frees it. It does have one remaining deficiency I'd like to address. But my time is up, so I'm going to leave that for next time. Happy hacking!